works. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erin, Erin Chen. I'm the founder of Leela Sutra, a sexual wellness company, um, as Angela introduced. And we're going to talk to you about my fuck up story. Um, it's kind of funny because I'm, it's actually technically not over. I'm at, <laughs> it's at mid fuck. So that comment earlier about it takes two years and all that stuff, I'm kind of like right in the middle of it. Um, and Angela and I joke that, you know, I'm not there yet, that like post five cigarette. So I'm not really like that. Yeah. So, um, and I work in the area of sexual wellness. So just a bit of a forewarning, I'm going to use words like sex tonight, sex toys, lubes, G-spot, clitoris, just getting that all out there. <laughs> um, but it's not that type of fuck up story. It's still about a startup. <laughs> um, so I was thinking about, you know, how to start sharing this story. And this definition of startup kept coming up for me. Um, a friend of uh, mine sent it to me a few months ago, and it really resonated with me. Um, now, this is not the absolute truth. Like, there are many other definitions of what a startup is. This one just resonated with me. And, you know, he reminded me that a startup is a temporary organization in the search of a sustainable and scalable business model. I don't know who said this, so I'm attributing, attributing it to my friend, um, Damien. Um, and the word in there that I really liked was search, because <laughs> that's basically what the last two years really felt like for me. It was a search of something scalable and something sustainable. Um, and the startup idea was Leela Sutra, and this is how it started. The idea that I started off with was to sell pleasure products, aka you know, sex toys, organic lubricants, massage oils, you name it, um, through the home party model, or direct sales, as some would say. Um, and it's an idea that's quite popular in the States, quite popular in the UK, um, the idea of you know, home parties, direct sales model for sex toys. I mean, it's just never been done in Asia before. You know, we we had that for supplements, for insurance, for other stuff, but not for toys. And you know, for me, when this idea came about, I, it was perfect for me because it checked a lot of boxes. Um, a, I, you know, even though I was a manager in consulting, um, I was a total sex geek. You know, I've been since I was a teenager. I was just Human sexuality fascinated me. I was always that friend that people would talk sex with. I shared everything I read with all my friends. Um, and I wanted to do something meaningful, something fulfilling, something that would make a difference. And I thought, you know, this could work in Asia. You know, we have this perception that Singapore or Asian society is pretty conservative. No one wants to talk about it. So I thought this approach could be good. You know, it's it's intimate, it's safe, people feel more comfortable. No one wants to walk through a black curtain on Orchard Road, right, to check out products. So, okay, that's how I started. <laughs> Didn't quit my job right away. <laughs> um, I did the lean startup boot camp thing, so I knew, like, all right, you're supposed to test your assumptions. So I went out, bought a bunch of toys, and asked my friends to, you know, do them, like, do a sex toy party for them. So that's how I started, um, on the side. You know, consulting by day, by night, doing parties for friends, um, and the word kind of spread from there. And before you are, you know, before your mind kind of like runs off and you're like, sex plus sex toys plus home parties, what kind of a party is this? <laughs> That's kind of like how my dad reacted when I told him what I was doing. Um, he was like, the mafia's in that business. I'm like, I'm not trafficking people. Um, um, you know, these, these, these parties actually turned out to be really fun. Um, they were inclusive, they were gender friendly. Um, women started, you know, they had a lot of fun learning. We talked about where your G-spot was, um, you know, what the clitoris actually looks like. Um, and, you know, do your Kegels, very important. Um, and they were really educational. So I thought, okay, like, I'm, I could be onto something. You know, expats were liking it, locals were liking it, I tested it with different age groups. And it got to a point where, you know, I felt like I needed to spend a lot more time networking and um, introducing myself to people because this was a very new concept in Singapore, you know. So I needed to spend a lot more time educating, basically, the community. So it came to a time where I was like, all right, fuck, should I quit now? Like, what, what do I do, you know? And I got this piece of advice 
which was really helpful, actually. And I received this piece of advice at the second fuck up night, which is kind of cool because we're on, what are we on now, 15? 15, so that's a lot of fuck ups between number two and number 15, which is, you know, kind of consoling for me. It was for me when I realized that. Um, and the advice was, you know, basically my friend, Adele, she also runs, she used to run this with um, Angela. She sat me down and she's like, Erin, your idea could be brilliant or it could be shit. Um, some people will think it's awesome, some people will think it's not gonna work. The only thing that you, you know, the only way that you'll know if it works is if you actually do it, right? So the only thing that's black and white right now that's certain is money. How much money do you have? And how much time does that buy you? And is that enough time? So that made it really easy for me. So I went back, you know, looked at how much I had saved, looked at how much I needed, that gave me a timeline, and near the end of 2015, I quit. Woohoo! So I went into 2016, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, right? I'm like, super, yeah! Um, but really, what happened in 2016, are any of you friends fans? <laughs> are any of you friends fans? Like, you know, play, play! Oh, here we go, Tim it! Tim it! Tim it! Tim it! Tim it! Tim it! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! That's basically what Town 16 was like for me. It was just a shitload of pivots. Um, so, I started off with this idea, right? Tested, ran with it, all right. Uh, no, no, not, didn't work. Um, you know, because I thought, all right, I'm just gonna fine tune the process, create my script, create this business in a box, and find people who are just passionate me, who will do this with me, grow my sales team. Um, people were passionate, people really responded, they wanted to be part of this movement, but people weren't really ready to go out and sell toys. Um, so this is going to take a lot longer than I had planned. Um, all right, so then I needed to create other revenue streams. Ecom, yes, they're going to open an online shop because you know past customers wanted to buy other stuff, right? So I'm like, great, I'm going to do this. Two birds, one stone. Um, turn out, I'm, ecom is like a whole other beast. Uh, it's like a full time job, <laughs> right? And I soon found that out. And I, I have a business background. I'm kind of techy, but like. Wow, that was tough. Okay, so moving on. People started asking me how much I charged. And in the beginning, I was doing these for free. So when people started asking me, you know, how much do you charge, that was kind of telling me, like, all right, people found value in the experience. It wasn't just about the toys. So great, I created different workshops, you know, and I started charging for them. Um, then other brands started approaching me, and they wanted to collaborate and put on events. And, you know, there were certain people that gave me feedback that they didn't want to come to such an intimate thing. They didn't want to hear about their friends' sex lives. Um, they wanted to, you know, good point. Um, and they wanted to kind of something that they could be more anonymous but still get that experience. So then I started doing events, you know, and they kind of got larger, and I did the vagina mall logs, and they sold out, and like, yay! Um, so lots of pivots. And at the same time, you know, women were asking him, and they were asking, you know, do you do private sessions? Because I want to continue this conversation. So I'm like, okay, I'm not equipped to do that yet, so I'm going to get a master's <laughs> in sexual health counseling. Um, so lots of pivots. And, you know, some of them didn't really work. Like, that's not, that did not work. Um, Ecom, not going to work. You know, fuck ups there. Um, and, and at the same time, in 2016, you know, life threw a few pivots at me as well. Um, so at around the time when I tendered my resignation, my now husband thought, hey, it's a good time to propose. <laughs> so he surprised me with a proposal. Well, oh, you're early, in my head, plan. Um, so <laughs> some women are like, that's great. I'm like, yay, we got married in 2016. <laughs> you know, it was another big event. Um, and then near the end of 2016, my husband um, was offered a really good opportunity in Zurich. So we're moving! So, <laughs> you know, on top of all the boxes that I had originally checked for my startup idea, now I had another box. I needed to now pivot towards something that was international, that was borderless. 
So, yeah, it was, um, 2016 was a lot of fun, really stressful, and, you know, this is what it looks like from the outside, right? You know, the networking is starting to pay off, people, were, you know, people were starting to find out about what it is that I did, word was spreading, and so, you know, woo, her world wanted to, like, put me in their magazine, and expat living, and all that, and people wanted to interview me, and... You know, dialogues sold out, so people were like, wow, Erin, you're doing so great. Um, you know, good job. And, like, that's kind of, that's the left side, right? People were like, oh, I wish I, you know, had a passion or did whatever. And the right side's kind of like what it really felt like. You know, I'm just constantly like, ah, pivot, pivot. <laughs> and, you know, the only thing for me personally that kept me sane throughout all the, the all this was two things. One was, you know, my husband, my friends, family, support, um, support network. And the second thing for me was purpose, the sense of purpose. So I started off with a strong interest in sexual wellness, you know, something I could talk about all the time. But throughout the two years, it's really, I, it's really validated for me that this is, really now more than just a passion, it's a purpose. So even though it's like all these pivots and pivots, it's still towards a similar direction, at least for me, you know, it's, for me, I honestly, I want my kids to grow up in a world where sex is not a taboo, right? It's like, we could talk about sex the way we talk about food, you know, and, and it, yeah, I, I could go on and on, but that's, that's a different, different talk. Um, so, so that's what really kept it going for me. Um, and so going back to the idea of like mid fuck, right? Um, and I, Angela and I were joking about this, you know, mid fuck implies that there's an end to the fuck up. Uh, but I don't know, right? I'm still pivoting. So <laughs> maybe, maybe that's just, this is going to get really deep now. Maybe that's just what life is. It's just one big <laughs> mid fuck, right? <laughs> you never know when like the end will come. But like you're on the way, right? You're in, you're you're on the right path, and that's that's at least kind of how I feel. That's what kind of keeps me on this path. Um, so mid fuck, where am I now? Basically, I'm. Ex oh, you're not supposed to see that code yet. Uh, but anyway, I'm exiting the pleasure products business, as you can see. Uh, the code is actually for a sale that's happening now um, on the Lila Sutra website. Fifty percent off. Use the code pivot. Um, and basically the next two pivots coming up are this festival that I'm running, uh, which Angela uh, uh, referred to earlier. It's, you know, the first in Asia, never been done before, festival that celebrates sexual wellness. Um, throughout all the pivots, you know, you, you start to learn what you're good at and what you're not, right? I have a business background, I was in consulting, I thought I would build this like fabulous startup, right? Like, yeah, I'm gonna be a unicorn. And it's <laughs> taking a lot longer than I thought. Um, it's very humbling. Um, but you start to, or I start to, you start to see what you're good at. So I'm good at events, I'm good at organizing, right? I'm good at creating that space for people where they feel comfortable. And so, you know, that's where I'm focusing now. I'm collaborating with Green is New Black. Um, it's on May 12th and May 13th. Um, it's going to be awesome. It's at Resorts World. We're filling like six ballrooms with tons of brands, different marketplaces, speakers, thought leaders. Um, and we're going to show them that Singapore is not so pretty as, you know, we all think it is. And you're not. I know. I've seen so many people. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's the, that's the link where you can find more information. And, you know, the, the last period that I'm doing now is I'm going to private practice. Um, and it's something that I can take with me. It's international. I'm going to be making trips back to Singapore three times a year. Um, and so that's kind of how I've worked out this next pivot. Um, and, and let's see where this takes. So, yeah, thank you.